So today I'm going to be proving that. We're going to be repeating all the tests we've done before in real time to see how the old model performs with one form of optimization. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. So let's answer the question. What's wrong with the new MacBooks? The answer is very simple. It's the old MacBook. The thing is, the MacBook from last year, the regular M1 MacBook, is extremely powerful. And it comes at an unbelievable price. Like, for example, the Mac Mini is like, I, I remember buying it for $650 at the time, and it's extremely powerful. So, in order for these to be justified, like this one is for $5,000, for example, in order for the prices of these computers to be justified, they must be able to perform some tasks that the old one cannot do without optimizations, for example. So I'm, I'm looking for a real difference here. I'm looking for something like maybe these ones can play formats that this one cannot without any optimization. Maybe they can add a lot of color effects and play them without any optimization. And frankly, that happened. We managed to find some tests where the high-end model was able to play uh, certain footage better than the last year's model. However, last year's model with some optimization can play all the formats and, and pass all the tests that these can, can pass. So today I'm going to be proving that. We're going to be repeating all the tests we've done before with, with all of these computers. We're going to be running all these tests in real time to see how the old model performs with one form of optimization, timeline proxy mode, by reducing it to half or quarter. And let's check what kind of playback can we get on the old model. Let's start. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. So let's start with um, the tests from the last video. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna only focus on this one for now because this is the model from last year. And I'm simply going to go to playback, timeline proxy mode, and select quarter resolution. Now, remember something very important about quarter resolution. If you're using a 4K timeline and you use quarter resolution, the preview image is still very acceptable. However, if you're using an HD timeline and you go to quarter resolution, sometimes the image becomes really mushy and not clear, but on a 4K timeline, I have no problem going to quarter resolution. So this is a 4K timeline, which is why I decided to use a uh, quarter resolution instead of uh, half. So the first test is uh, the film grain. So I'm going to play and notice that we're playing in real time. This is last year's model, no issue at all. It's it's just playing everything in real time. So this is simply adding film grain. Next, let's uh, move to the color uh, tests now. For this model, it was able to play the first two clips without any issue, and we only faced trouble at the last two clips where we added effects that were very hard to play along with lots. Just, you can reference that video. This is the same footage. However, this time, instead of full resolution, quarter resolution, so full screen play. Yep, no issue at all plays it back in real time with all the LUTs and all the nodes and all the effects we're adding. It's just a lot of effects. Then we move to the last one where we actually add a dehaze effect and a couple of more secondaries, which was extremely hard to play. However, now with a quarter resolution, let's check it out. Yeah, no issue at all. So basically using quarter resolution in Resolve turned last year's model into a supercomputer basically because uh, there is nothing it cannot play in real time, at least in this test. So now I just switched to the uh, noise uh, test from last week also. So um, playback and we're on quarter resolution now. And let's try playing the same clips with noise reduction. So this is the first clip, play, no issues at all. It just plays it back in real time. Then let's move to the next clip which actually, if I remember correctly, is a spatial test, and we just increased the luminance chrominance to 100% play. And again, no issue, it plays it back in real time. I'm not gonna bore you with this. The next one, again, real time. And now we'll switch to the temporal noise reduction tests. Let's move to the second one, which uses five frames, um, you know, to look and with 50% luminance chrominance temporal threshold play and yeah. Again, real time, no issues at all. And let's switch to the last one, which was the hardest test where luminance and chrominance are both set to 100 with five frames. And 
again real time no issues at all so now let's switch to the noise reduction tests from last week again on last year's model i'll make sure that i lowered the timeline proxy mode to quarter and let's start with the last one that actually uses speed warp play and we're getting maximum of four frames per second let's also lower the resolution in the uh, in the new models and see if they can play it in real time so in this one i'll make sure that proxy mode quarter resolution and also in this one i'll also go to playback proxy mode and quarter resolution so this is the base model from this year play and it cannot play it back in real time so no for speed warp this one even with optimization couldn't play back in real time so let's check the top end model from this year move to the last clip which actually uses speed warp play and yeah it still cannot play it back in real time i'm just going to double check playback timeline proxy mode and we are on quarter resolution so here's the deal here's exactly what i'm saying the new models still needs the same kind of optimization in order to play something like speed warp that the old model needed so this is on quarter resolution now the old model cannot play it back in in real time and the top end model also this year cannot play it back in real time so it requires the same kind of optimization and now let's check the first test that we played uh, in the first video in the series where we try to play formats that are hard to play in any system so let's start with 12k uh, footage at 24 frames per second and i'm simply going to go to playback timeline proxy mode quarter and let's see if the old model can play one stream so play and yeah no problem at all it's playing one stream in, in, in real time next let's move to playing two streams of 12k uh, 24 frames per second side by side place it back in real time uh, now let's move to four streams so now four 12k clips play and it plays everything back in real time without any issue so basically with with just one form of optimization on a 4k timeline we were able to, do, to perform every single test this old machine or not very old this is last year's model m1 but it's basically a supercomputer it can do anything uh, let's move now to 8k so this is 8k footage but in 60 frames per second instead of uh, 24 uh, let's again make sure that timeline proxy mode is quarter and one video play yeah plays back in real time no issues at all let's move now to the second test with two 8k clips 60 frames per second side by side yeah plays it back with no issues at all and finally 60 frames per second for 8k streams and yeah we're playing all of this with no issue at all let's next move to one of the hardest formats to play the c500 so this is 5.9k at 24 frames per second and let's play and no it cannot play it back in real time however the c500 requires a certain kind of optimization so i will switch to the color page go to the raw settings and i'm going to switch from full res canon to full res resolve so now the information is being interpreted by resolve instead of by the canon interpreter it doesn't matter what that means all what happened now is that we're using full resolve and now we have just smooth playback without any issue at all uh, and the footage is still the same quality nothing changed so let's switch all the other clips to use the resolve decoder instead of canons in order to test the rest of the footage so all of them now are using full res resolve remember 5.9k uh, from the c500 this is the one of the hardest formats to play ever we're using two forms of optimization now so we we're using quarter resolution and we changed the uh, raw settings to use uh, full res resolve two streams play and yeah no issues at all it plays it back in real time this is one of the hardest formats to play ever and now let's move to four streams play and everything is being played back in real time so with two forms of optimization we're able to play c500 footage in real time with no issues at all next let's move to another form of impossible footage which is the uh, r5 8k raw currently we're using uh, full res resolve to decode the 8k raw footage from the r5 so now let's start testing the system 
again, uh, let me make sure that um, I use playback, timeline, proxy mode, quarter, and this is 8K from the R5. Play, plays it back in real time, no issue at all. Then we have the two streams, again, no problem at all, plays it back in real time. And finally, we have the four streams, and again, no problem at all. The issue here is that when we tested the same footage on the newer model, so the top end model from this year, it couldn't play two streams in real time of the R5 footage. So I just clicked here, I'm hitting play, and it, it won't even play. It's very hard for it to play. So even the new models require the same form of optimizations, the, the new models, as the model from last year. Please don't get me wrong, the new Macs are extremely impressive and extremely powerful. However, I test everything from the perspective of someone using Resolve. And uh, these are the results I was able to find. Uh, so basically my workflow usually consists of using like four nodes maximum. I edit 4K max. Uh, even if I shoot like higher than 4K, I edit in 4K. Uh, I work with Fusion and uh, I couldn't find a tangible difference between these computers once you use some form of optimization. Now, I'm very comfortable with using optimization. Some people might not be. Uh, however, just keep in mind that other workloads might benefit from the extra power of these computers, which is something I did not test. You can check other videos for that. Like, for example, rendering extremely heavy 3D scenes, compiling a lot of code and other stuff. So, a disclaimer, these results were only for my workload or the kind of work that I do. Uh, the new Macs also have some really great stuff like uh, the large screen. Uh, remember, the old model comes with a much smaller uh, screen. They have a phenomenal battery life, a lot of ports. Uh, they have a notch. So, uh, I hope you like this. If you like this, uh, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com